Hi, this is Mr. Champlin. We are going to start with a math review and need to know calculus. Math review is math probably that you already have learned in the past. And the need to know calculus is just the calculus we're going to need at the very beginning of the class. Uh, it's fairly simple, so don't be nervous. All right, we are going to start with linear functions, which I'm sure you are familiar with. Uh, a lot of functions in physics are linear. Um, so I'll give you three different formulas. The slope formula, the point slope form, and the slope intercept form. So if we take two points, I'm sorry, we're going to take one point, and it's going to be, the point, point will be three negative 2, and the slope of the line going through this point is 4. We want to find out the slope interfor intercept form for that. So this should be a review. So you have your x, your y term. This is your x, and this is your y. So we plug in negative 2 equals slope of 4. Um, 3 is x plus b. And negative 2 is on the left side. 4 times 3 is 12, plus b. Subtract 12 from both sides. And you get b is equal to negative 14. So consequently, the formula would be y equals slope of 4, x minus 14. So that would be the line linear form, uh, or the line that would go to that point. Let's move on. Velocity and speed is real, aren't really math concepts. They're more, obviously, physics concepts, but we need to learn a little bit about them, uh, or review a little bit about them. Velocity is the rate of change in position, while speed is the ratio of distance over time interval. Um, so if I was to write that down in formula, velocity equals uh, change of r over change in t. R can be x direction, y direction, or we can call it r direction. While speed is distance divided by time interval. OK, so if we had two spots, call this A and B, the displacement would be the straight line distance between those two points, just straight from one to the other. That would be delta r. But the distance, I might not take a straight path. I might kind of meander around. All right, I'm going all kinds of crazy directions. And then I finally end up at my destination. So this would be the distance traveled, even though no matter how I went, the displacement would be the same. So that's the difference between speed and velocity. Um, in terms of signs, velocity has a can be positive or negative, while speed is always positive because it's, it's an absolute value of distance. Natural logarithms. Um, during a couple times during the school year, well, a few times during the year, we will be working with um, logarithms, specifically natural logs. So we know that from your math class that you know that a natural log is an um, exponent. So if you look at um, in the, the log form base 10, b to the x equals y. So if you take the natural log, or the, rec the log of both sides, the log of b of the, the answer equals the exponent. So the same applies for natural log. You take the log um, of the answer, and that equals the exponent. So we're going to take an example. We're going to have e to the 2x plus 1 equals 9. And we're going to find x. So I'm going to take the um, log of both sides. And um, you, and according to rule number three here, you bring out the exponent times 
ln of e equals ln of 9. ln of e equals 1, so you end up 1 times this term, which would leave this the same. And you have ln of 9. So solving for the variable, it would be subtract 1 from both sides. You have 2x equals ln of 9 minus 1. Therefore, x equals ln of 9 minus 1 divided by 2. All right, so that would be the solution. It works out to be about 0.6 approximate. You'll get more practice in the worksheet. Polar and Cartesian coordinates. Very important concept. In physics, we'll be going back and forth between these. These angles uh, often will be in degrees, but also in radians. So uh, we'll take an example. We're going to go from polar to Cartesian. So therefore, I'm going to start with 5, 5 pi over 6. So we know that 5, the first number listed is the magnitude or the length of the vector, and this is the direction of the vector. Uh, we're going to go to Cartesian formats, format. So we're going to use um, this formula and this formula. So we take x equals vector length 5 times a cosine of 5 pi over 6. And we end up with uh, negative 4.4. Well, to get the y component, we go 5 sine 5 pi over 6. You get positive 2.5. Now we're going to go the other direction, going from Cartesian to polar. So that's going to look like negative uh, 4 point, or I'm using the third formula, negative 4.4 squared plus 2.5 2 squared equals r squared. If you complete this, you get 5.1. Now you're thinking, well, why is this different than this 5? Well, the reason being is this was rounded. So uh, that's why it's slightly different. That's how to get the magnitude. To get the angle, you plug it into the fourth formula down, tan theta. Uh, y is uh, 2.5 divided by negative 4.4. So theta inverse tan, 2.5 over 4.4. And if you, you complete this in your calculators in radian mode, you get negative 0.52. All right, the reason it's negative because you are in the first second quadrant. How do I know 5? Five? 5 pi over 6 is a little less than pi because this is pi. So 5 pi over 6 is over here. So we're somewhere negative 4.4, say about there, up 2.5, say about there. So we just determine this angle, negative because it's measured from the negative x. We don't measure our angles that way in physics. We're going to go this way. So what you're going to do with your final answer is you're going to add on 2 pi. And it ends up to be 2.62, which if you f simplify this, that's what this, this what ends up to be. All right, so you get to more practice on that. Derivatives, that's why I want to see, leave, leave a little extra time for that. Derivatives are important in physics because uh, we deal with a lot of graphs in physics, and a uh, derivative is def directly related to a graph. A derivative we call f prime x is a function that is used to determine the slope of any tangent line of of a function, f sub x. The tangent line to a graph is drawn with a parallel line at the point of interest. So if I take a graph 
like so. And I draw a function. Okay. And um, it has some function. We'll call that f sub x. Well, if I draw tangent lines, which tangent are, let's say I want to draw a tangent line right there. So I draw a line parallel to the graph at that point. Or right here, parallel to the point. I didn't quite touch, but it should be parallel right there. So to determine the slope of that parallel line, you would take the derivative, okay? The mathematical process, the derivative. But you could also do it by hand, by just drawing the, the graph um, and then drawing a tangent line and, and calculating the slope, just like you learned slope before. Now we're going to deal with, um, there's many different ways to find a derivative, but we are going to use the power rule for um, polynomials and exponential functions. The uh, derivative rule is if you have a function x to the nth power, you want to take the derivative, you bring down the exponent, you subtract 1 from the exponent, and that would be the function. So if we take an example of f sub x equals t squared, the derivative, bring down the exponent 2, and subtract 2 minus 1, and that simplifies out to 2t to the first power, which we can leave as 2t. Let's take another one. Oh, you know what? We should have left this in terms of t, not of x, my fault. So think of this as t. Okay, and you could do an x too. It doesn't matter. It's just a variable. Okay, so let's do another one. Let's say we have a function of 7t squared minus 8t. Take the derivative using the power rule. Bring the 2 down. So you already have a coefficient, so you take 7 times the 2. T, uh, 2 minus 1 is 1. Um, now this is ex assumed 1 out here, so you'd bring the 1 down, so that would be negative 8 times 1. T, 1 minus 1 is t to the 0 power. And I'm sure you know anything to the 0 power is 1. So this would be minus 8 times 1, or minus 8. So that would be the derivative. So therefore, if we had a function, let's take this one up here. We know from previous, if it's a squared function, we, it goes up like that. So we can use this derivative function, 2t, to figure out the slope of this tangent line at any point. Just plug in a time where it is, and you can figure out what the slope is. And that is the purpose of a derivative.